RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents transcribed The Phil Harris Alice Fay Show. <laughs> Your enjoyment here is the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. All of you who have children know that at some time or other they get into mischief. But what the Harris children do to Alice today shouldn't happen to a mother. More about that later. First, a word from RCA Victor. A glance at the calendar will show you that the national elections are less than a month away, so there's no time to waste. It's time to buy your RCA Victor television set. Then you'll be ready to enjoy television's complete coverage of that important night, from the early vote returns to the interviews with our new president. You'll see the clearest pictures on new RCA Victor television thanks to the exclusive magic monitor circuit system that acts like an engineer inside your set. The magic monitor screens out interference automatically, steps up power automatically, and automatically ties the clearest picture to the best sound. The magic monitor is built into every new RCA Victor set, into the brand new Shelly, for example. The Shelly is a handsome 17-inch table model, priced at only $199.95. And it's a real bargain for your budget. And that low price is complete, including federal excise tax and full year warranty on the 17-inch picture tube. So buy the Shelly at your dealers tomorrow. You'll want to see RCA Victor Television Deluxe, too. Be ready to enjoy television's full coverage of the upcoming election. Remember, every year more people buy RCA Victor than any other television. And when you buy RCA Victor Television plus an RCA Victor factory service contract, you get television's greatest combination. Now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Fay and Bill Harris. Yeah. Phil has scheduled a band rehearsal for this afternoon, and he's very anxious for everything to come off just right because the sponsor is going to be there. As we look in, Phil is at home getting ready to leave for rehearsal. Now, let me see. I think I've got everything I need for my band rehearsal. My conducting wand, my podium, my music. Why bother with music? Your musicians can't read. <laughs> they don't have to know how to read. They memorize everything. <laughs> and look, I don't want you knocking them, Willie. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. Let's see. I got the music, pitch pipe, tuning fork, and earplugs. What are the earplugs for? The boys in the band, they can't stand to listen oh. to each other. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could think of some way to improve that band. What in the world could I do to make it sound better? Get a new male vocalist. And whom would you suggest? Me. <laughs> Alice has been giving me singing lessons, and I, I'm sure I'd be a valuable asset to your program. Ooh, that's peachy. <laughs> Look, I can't use you with my band. I have a very nice tenor voice. And I'll prove it to you, Philip. <clears throat> Barney Google with his Barney Google googly Google. Google eyes. Barney yeah, that's good, Google Willie. Had yeah, a that's fine. That'll be enough. Size. Yeah, you can knock when it off. Down, down, boy. Down, 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 boy. Down, boy. Thank you. Thank you. Place. Thank, Thank you, Carmen Lombardo. <laughs> I thought you gave up singing Look, Willie, forget about singing with the band Hey, I gotta get to rehearsal Where's that no-talent guitar player of mine? He's supposed to pick me up well, Maybe he's not gonna show up He's probably still mad at you For making fun of his real name last week Well, I couldn't help it That name of his, uh, uh, what is it again? Elliot Lewis Ooh <laughs> I get nauseous every time I hear it I'm not, I'll get that Hi, Curly. Sorry I'm late. Well, it's about time you got here. We got a rehearsal. Where you been? I stopped at my regular place for breakfast. It took the guy an hour to prepare it for me. Oh, must have had a fancy breakfast. No, same thing I always have. Then why did it take him an hour? New bartender. <laughs> <laughs> what 
What did you have for breakfast? The usual. Hot buttered toast and a whiskey sour. <laughs> a whiskey sour for breakfast? Sure. Everybody should start the day off with some fruit juice. All right. <laughs> Look, we're late for rehearsal, so let's go, Emery. Emery? Well, that's your new name, ain't it? My new name is Elliot, no cracks. All right, all right, Elliot. Ooh, come on. Oh, by the way, Alice, mm -hmm. any mail come here addressed to me? Why should your mail come here? Well, since I changed my name, I've been giving this as my mailing address. See, my new name doesn't go with my old address. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I think it sounds good. Mr. Elliot Lewis. 28, Skid Row Lane. <laughs> That's not my address. I live at 69 Vat Boulevard. <laughs> well, there ain't been any mail for you. We haven't had any mail ourselves for several days, and now that I come to think of it, the neighbors haven't even had any either. Mm -hmm. But I'll check on that later when I get back from rehearsal. Come on, Esther. Elliot! Esther Elliot, they're so close. Goodbye, <laughs> honey. Oh, goodbye, darling. Hurry back. Alice, what do you see in that old Indian? <laughs> Willie, please. He happens to be my husband, and Get I'm very. Hey, Uncle Willie, here comes the Pony Express. Now, girls, girls, how many times must I tell you not to bring your wagon into the house? I'm not going to tell you again, but. What have you got in that wagon, anyway? The neighbor's mail. We've been taking letters out of their boxes for the past two days so we can play post office. Yeah, and we're going to mix it up and put everybody's mail in somebody else's box. Oh, no. So that's why nobody in the neighborhood has been receiving any mail. Look, we're going to put that mail right back where it belongs, and we're going to do it right now. Oh, Alice, you can't do that. You can't let the neighbors think your family is responsible for this. You'll have to sneak it back tonight when nobody can see you. Well, it would be embarrassing trying to explain this. Uh, Willie, put all those letters in the hall closet till tonight. Uh, Phyllis, where's our mail? Oh, we've already delivered that. Delivered it? Where? We put it in mailboxes all over the neighborhood. Oh, that's terrible. We've got to get that back right now. Uh, girls, you get our mail out of the boxes on this block, and I'll take care of the next block. And don't let anybody see you. Well, shall we take this mail and put it back? No, no, we haven't time. Just leave it in the hall closet. I'll return it tonight. All right, Mother. But please don't tell Daddy about this. He'll get mad. All right, all right. I won't tell your father as long as you never, never do a thing like this again. Now, let's go get our mail back. So long, Willie. But, 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 Alice, you promised to give me another singing lesson. I don't have time now, Willie. Play one of my records and listen closely. Gee, it's great after being out late, walking my baby back home. Arm in arm over meadow and farm, walking my baby back home. We go along harmonizing a song, or I'm reciting a poem. Owls go by and they give me the eye, walking my baby back home. We stop for a while, she gives me a smile and snuggles her head to my chest. We start in the tent, and that's when he gets my powder all over his vest. After he kind of straightens his tie, I have to borrow his coat. One kiss, then I continue again, walking my baby back home. Walking my baby back home Arm in arm over meadow and farm Walking my baby back home We go along harmonizing a song Or I'm reciting a poem Owls go by and they give me the eye Walking my baby back home She's afraid of the dark So we have to park outside of her house for a rest We start in the pen that's when he gets my powder all over his vest. Hand in hand to a barbecue stand, right from the doorway we roll. Eats and then it's a pleasure again, walking my baby back home. Hey, 
Curly, the sponsor, didn't seem too happy with the rehearsal today. I don't think he liked the way the band played. I don't blame him. You guys sounded like you're playing underwater. The rest of them guys sounded bad enough, but I never heard you play your guitar as bad as you did today. It wasn't my fault. For the rehearsal, some wise guy sneaked in and put strings on it. <laughs> I almost cut the tips of my fingers off. <laughs> Look, they're all lacerated. I might get an infection. My fingers will fall off. Then how would I play my guitar? Use your elbows. Nobody could tell the difference. <laughs> I don't like your insinuation I happen to be a good musician Good musician You couldn't get a job playing Second Revolver with Spike Jones. <laughs> Look, kid, I don't want to hurt your feelings Hey, but Curly I... Isn't that Alice across the street? Where? Over there Oh, yeah, yeah I wonder what she's doing there wonder why she keeps looking over her shoulder She's acting awful suspicious What's suspicious? All she's doing is taking the mail out of the steward's mailbox. She always... The steward's mailbox! <laughs> now, what's she doing that for? Hey, look, Curly. Now she's going to the next house. She's taking a fistful out of their box, too. Yeah. What's the matter with her? Taking other people's mail. Hey, look at her now. She's emptying another box. I can't understand it. I can. I never wanted to mention it before, Curly, but... I always thought she looked a little crooked. <laughs> What are you talking about? Did you ever notice her eyes? <laughs> she has a squinting, shifty look. True. <laughs> I thought it was due to the smog. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. My wife wouldn't go around stealing mail. No, then look at her now. She's got the mail and she's hot footing at home. Yeah. Look at her scale that fence. <laughs> Now look at her scat through your garden. Look at swivel hips going through that corn. <laughs> she steps on my cocktail onions, I'll kill her. <laughs> Come on, let's her. <laughs> hey, let's get to the house and find out what this is all about. Come yeah. on. Uh, oh, Alice, Alice, where are you? Oh, uh, I'm in here, Phil. Uh, I'll be right out. Listen to oh. her puff. She's getting a little old for them high fences. <laughs> oh, Phil, I, I didn't expect you home so early. Oh, no? What have you been doing, dear? Oh, nothing. I, I've been in the kitchen preparing salmon. <laughs> What'd you have to do, swim upstream? <laughs> You're a little out of breath. Uh, Have you been running around outside, maybe? Outside? No, I, I haven't left the house all day. I, I've been sitting here uh, knitting. <laughs> then why are you uh, puffing? Uh, heavy needles. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I have to go and file the warts off the pickles. Ha! <laughs> She's not only a crook, but she tells lousy jokes <laughs> How do you like that, Curly? She denies being out of the house And we saw her stealing mail I still can't believe it Look, I'm going to get to the bottom of this mm -hmm. Now, come on, let's find out what she's doing in that other room Wait a minute, look, no noise we're going to eavesdrop. Curly, that's my business. <laughs> now, don't talk too loud, girls. Your father is in the house. Shh, she's talking to the kids. Well, girls, how did you make out? Fine, I got the mail out of the Ackman's box, and here's the mail from the Bennett's box. There was a cop on the corner, but he didn't see me. I'm too clever. How do you like that? She's got my kids working. <laughs> I'm living in a nest of thieves. Imagine teaching little kids to steal for her. Are you sure her name isn't Alice Fagan? How about the rest of the mail, Mom? Oh, I'll take care of that tonight, after it gets dark. Well, can we go with you? Oh, no, no, you girls have to go to bed. I'll do this alone. Well, 
At least she's not taking the kids out on her night job. <laughs> Probably don't want to split the swag with them. <laughs> I've got a good mind to tell my kids that she's double-crossing them. I can't stand any more of this. Come on, uh, Elliot. What are you going to do, Curly? I don't know. I've got to have time to think this over. Come on, let's take a walk. Right. Wait a minute till I get my head out of the closet. Alice never did a dishonest thing in her life. There must be some... some... Oh, no! What's the matter, Curly? The whole closet's full of mail. She must have been doing this for years. <laughs> oh, what a sweet racket. So that's where she got all her money. <laughs> to think I've been living off of stolen relief checks, old age pensions, <laughs> and women's insurance money. <laughs> yeah. Gee whiz, that settles it. I'm going to tell Alice that I know what she's doing and I insist that she stop. What, and kill a good thing? <laughs> How could Alice have denied doing this thing? Well, maybe she steals without knowing it. You mean she's one of them creptiloxomaniacs? <laughs> I gotta do something about this, but I don't know why. Now, Curly, don't trouble yourself. Let me figure this out for you. You just relax and take it easy. Why don't you sing? Sing? What's the matter with you? I find out my wife and kids are crooks, and you stand there and ask me to sing. Yeah. Well, I don't feel like it. But at my age, I can't afford to turn down a request. <laughs> Called up to tell you that I'm rugged but right A ramblin' and a gamblin' man I'm free every night I eat a pot of house steak Three times a day for my board More than any guy in this whole town can afford I got a big electric fan To keep me cool when I sleep A mattress stuffed with dollar bills To tickle my feet My motto is love them and meet them And leave them and cheat them And break them in right I just called up to tell you That I'm rugged but right my house was built with pawn shop tickets, red, white, and blue. My suits are made of tiger skins right out of the zoo. I got a lot of money in the bank. I made it myself. The hearts of all my girlfriends lying right on my shelf. The girls all stop and whistle every time I go by. But I'm pretty darn particular. I'm telling no lie. I'm in there wheeling and dealing and really appealing and high as a kite. I just called up to tell you that I'm rugged but right. I just called up to tell you that I'm rugged but fair. You caused me plenty worry, put some gray in my hair. You got the lips that sunk the ships of England, France, and Peru. I'm just like Napoleon, cause you're my Waterloo. I'd like a 15-minute intermission in your Ford V8. I'd love to make it longer, but I've got a late date. My morals have always been gone with the wind, so let's breeze it tonight. I just called up to tell you that I'm rugged but right. Don't overdo it, cause I really overdo it last night. Hey, Curly. Yeah. I've been thinking this over and I got it all figured out. If you follow my plan, you'll never have to worry about Alice. Oh, I love you. <laughs> I knew I could count on you. What are we going to do? Call the FBI and turn her in. <laughs> I can't turn Alice in. She's my wife. But this is a federal offense. What's more important, your wife or your country? My country? No, my wife. No. That's a tough question. <laughs> my country I'm living in and my wife I'm living off. <laughs> can't turn Alice in. They'll arrest her. Don't you realize that? They'll arrest her and send her away to prison. That'll upset my whole life. What do you mean? Well, I'm a very busy guy. What with my radio shows, my television appearances, my recordings, and going up to visit Alice, I won't have any time to go fishing. <laughs> uh, well, Curly, I can fix that. I'll see that she's sent to a pen close by. 
I get a little pull, I think I can get her sent to Alcatraz. <laughs> right in the San Francisco Bay, and you can take a ferry over every Sunday and see her. I can't let them send Alice to Alcatraz. What's the matter with Alcatraz? I get seasick on a ferry. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm not gonna turn Alice in mm -hmm. All we got to do is to take all these letters And sneak them back into the right boxes tonight Now, how do you like that idea? Oh, crazy man, crazy <laughs> I can't wait to get caught with a sack of hot mail <laughs> Yeah, you're right We could get caught <laughs> Look, we'll just have to get somebody else to do it for us. Now, we'll find somebody to take that... Anybody home? I brought the groceries. This kid's timing is uncanny. <laughs> hey, Curly, how are you going to get him to take them letters back? He's a kid, a kid. I'll make a game out of it. Hiya, fellas. Oh, Julia. Hey, you're just in time. Uh, Julie, how would you like to play post office with me? You puck! One blubber lip and I'll clout you with his salami. <laughs> We're not talking about that kind of post office. <laughs> We're playing mailman. Ooh, how perfectly lovable. <laughs> Why don't we play house instead? Mr. Harris can be the father and you can be the mother. And you'll be the mailman. No, I'll be the guy who throws the net over you and takes you to the nut house. <laughs> I think we're using the wrong approach with this boy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Julius, I'm going to be perfectly frank with you. Uh, I've got something awful to tell you and it's very confidential. What is it, Mr. Harris? Well, I just found out that the woman I love is a crook. No kidding. You won't tell anybody, will you? No. I won't even tell your wife. <laughs> Don't be funny. I'm talking about my wife. She's a crook, a thief, and she's been stealing mail. You're accusing Miss Faye of being a thief? Ooh, I won't stand here and listen to this. I'm going to take my delivery basket and get out of here. But, Julius, you can help me. Don't leave Curly, now. Curly, you... Curly, let him go. But we want him to take the mail with him. He's taking it. <laughs> huh? But he don't know he's taking it. <laughs> While you were talking to him, I planted the letters in his delivery basket. At least we're getting it out of the house. <laughs> well, don't you realize that as soon as the kid gets out of the house with the mail, we're in the clear. <laughs> it's... Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, come in. I beg your pardon. I'm from the postal inspector's office. Ow! <laughs> Some mail has been missing in this neighborhood, and we have a pretty good idea who's taking it. Holy smoke, then it's true what Mr. Harris said. Officer, I happen to know who it is, too. And I feel it's my patriotic duty to turn in the culprit. The one who stole the mail is... Mr. Harris, please don't... Sorry, that. Julius, but if you've been stealing mail, you've got to pay the penalty. <laughs> Take him away, officer. So long, kid. I'll send you a cake. Wait a minute. You can't... Don't worry, kid. I'll get you a good, cheap lawyer. You'll have you out in 20 or 30 years. You'll have time to get in the Army. <laughs> Why are you trying to pin this on me? I didn't do nothing. I'm just an innocent grocery boy. A likely story. Search him, officer. Better yet, search his grocery basket. What have you got in that basket, son? Nothing but groceries. I'll lift up the lid and show you. Look, artichokes, rutabagas, string beans, special delivery letters, airmail letters. <laughs> Looks bad for you, son. But I never saw this stuff before. I'm innocent, I tell you. I'm innocent. <laughs> I'm innocent. <laughs> this kid can ask. <laughs> Great. I think he's overplaying it a little. <laughs> Phil, Phil, what's all the racket in Don't here? Don't get excited, lady. I am from the postal inspector's office. Do your own. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. This man is arrested 
arresting me for stealing mail. Arresting you? Oh, officer, I can't let you arrest this boy. He's innocent. I know he didn't steal that mail. I have a confession to make. Thank goodness there's a spark of decency left in her. <laughs> Lady, you seem to know something about this. Did you steal this mail? Well, of course not. My two little girls stole it. <laughs> How do you like that? She's railroading her own babies on a bum rap. My kids didn't do it. All right, make up your mind. They don't care who did it, but I'm arresting somebody. Then arrest the right person. Who is the right person? She is. I am not. Of course she isn't. I think it was Mr. Harris. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Do I look like the kind of a guy who would steal? Just look at my face. Look at me. You can see I'm honest and wouldn't. Who slipped these handcuffs on me? <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. There are probably dozens of radio programs that you list among your favorites. So don't miss them just because you're on the go. Visit your RCA Victor dealer and select RCA Victor's new Super Personal Radio. The Super Personal is easy to carry and easy to take anywhere because it's lightweight, no larger than an average book. And yet it's a powerful portable. It gives you room size, volume, big radio tone. What's more... RCA Victor's new Super Personal is available in six stunning colors, and it's economical to operate. Thanks to RCA Balanced Light Batteries and a special battery lifesaver switch that allows your batteries to loaf in good signal strength areas, the Super Personal plays ten times longer than previous small portable radios without changing batteries. Follow your favorite radio shows wherever you go by RCA Victor's new long-playing Super Personal portable radio. Friday nights, it's daytime on television. So see Dennis Day get into one merry mix-up after another on the new RCA Victor show every Friday, NBC TV. And now, an important reminder. October is the month when local communities will be starting their community chess campaigns. Campaigns which symbolize the strength of democracy through voluntary concern for our fellow men. The red feather services of your community chest represent almost every worthwhile social service in your community. Remember that you are asked to give only once during the year. So give generously to your community chest. Thanks, everybody, and good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Included in today's program transcribed was Will Wright. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Now you save almost one dollar with RCA Victor's new extended play 45 pop albums. 45 extended play gives you twice as much music for less money. Eight top pops for only two dollars and eighty cents. Four for only one dollar and forty cents before tax. All by RCA Victor stars who make the hits. Visit your record dealer tomorrow. See and hear his big selection of extended play 45s by RCA Victor. Tonight, it's Theater Guild on the air over NBC.